of an idea, but it works. Trust me, it so works. Huh? Boop. So my, my green is a little bit dark. And again, that is because of the weird yellow that I currently have. And I don't know why my yellow decided to be so dark, but that is the way it is. Hmm. That is the way the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. So we want to make sure that there's plenty of yellow in there for this lovely green rupee so it lightens up. And then of course it's some dark along our edges. Oh, turn my fan off, it's warm in here. Boop, boop. There we go. So we got some green, we got some yellow to highlight our green rupee. And these are just simple brush strokes. I'm using the flat of my brush. You don't have to be an artist to do these things, trust me. You just have to play around a little bit and get used to how you want to hold your brush. Okay. It's not like I spilled any water, there wasn't any in it. There we go. And that's why we like to have a flooding brush because it fills in a lot of the areas. Oh, yellow, why are you so dark? There we go. All right, go ahead and show that off to the camera too. Again, my yellow is fairly dark, which is a little disappointing to me in general. Can't really do much about that. And then we have our red rupee as well. So let's go ahead and do our blue rupee next. We're gonna go ahead and rinse out our brush. And then go ahead and add some more water to my little dropper tool. Blue. Let's see, about 20 minutes for our first project. That sounds about right. Adding some blue to my little dish, cleaning out and drying off my flooding paintbrush. We're gonna go ahead and drop her in our blue rupee. And my blue is also fairly dark, so I like using it in very light amounts. Go ahead and flood that in. Flood is a apparently a professional term now. Go ahead and get some more water in. The best way to describe the watercolor projects is if you don't think it's what you want it to be, add more water. But remember, it is still a stain. So you want to very lightly use your, your brushes and things like that. Whee! I like playing with it a lot. <laughs> All right. So like I said, my blue doesn't need a lot of work. It doesn't need anything extra. And I want to take my paper towel, go ahead and blot it, get some cat hair off of it. Zoe. Darken up those edges. There we go. And we are good. So that is our lovely rupee pouch. So this was the first technique I learned where I'm just kind of flooding in there and filling it with cutter so color, excuse me. So it creates this lovely translucent look. So this will dry and I will post those photos later so you guys can see what it looks like. Might clean up my edges a bit to create a more finished look, but this is the general idea on that technique. So what do you guys think? I'm showing it on my face cam too, just so you guys can see it, but lovely, lovely. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our next technique. Let me take a drink of water first because hydration is important when you're working with watercolors. 
All right. This one is a fun one that I did on a fairy pouch. Um, if you guys saw those online before, the fairy pouch, everything was colored in, every single bit. So what I'm going to do is we're going to spray the entire thing like we normally would. Again, getting it to soak up that water before we do any of the watercolors. Watch out. Especially considering the laser designs also have some soot on them. So it's also good to wipe all that off. So with the fairy pouch in particular, everything was filled in. So what you can do is you can create those giant puddles that we did before and just start filling in the entire pouch. Now, obviously we probably don't want to start with that. That would be a very um, odd choice to say the least. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill in our mushrooms first, much like a regular painting technique. We're going to go ahead and fill in our mushrooms with some red. Oopsie. And then we will paint the background. But then I create my little puddles like I did before on my widow mushrooms. And thankfully with the laser design, the puddles like to stay in there too. It is always nice. Create my puddles, get my small brush, and start getting my wonderful watercolor in there first. And of course you can get them lighter, you can get them darker, whatever you choose. Get them that nice, you know, sunlight on them. So one side is lighter, one side is darker, something like that. Really up to you guys at that point. You can also generally paint in watercolors like you would a, a regular dye or a paint. That's boring. We don't want to do that. Get boring. Let's see, we get our nice big old puddles. Boop, boop, boop. So I'm sure as you're watching, you can kind of tell it's a bit of a back and forth. Whoopee. I got on my glove. Whatever that was. Loop. That's okay. Loop. Hummer. There we go. So kind of a back and forth between water and dye and water and dye and etc. Here we go. So you can see the lights, you can see the darks. Let's go ahead and put some green, let's say on the bottom area, why don't we? And then I will show you guys the flooding that I'm talking about for the rest of the pouch. Thank you. We're just creating areas of color first before we get into this little bit of technique. There we go. This should be enough. Just to show you guys kind of what I'm talking about. So then we want to clear our space. We have everything ready to go. So to create our fun backgrounds, I'm going to go ahead and do some gold. And let's do some more green and yellow, why don't we? I'm going to go ahead and again get some more color in my water stain bucket. Boop, boop. Mix my green and yellow together so it doesn't create too much of a pukey color. And get my gold. And always remember, shake up your watercolors before you use them. Shake, shake, shake. So now that we have our short design, obviously you can do the whole thing first. We have our fairly short design. We're going to go ahead and fill in the rest, or at least this half for the demonstration, of our mug, which is what this is going to be. It's going to be mug. And then you can see the puddle, and I like dripping it in. This is the fun part. Wee! Wee! Please have paper towels ready. Wee! 
I am making all of this nice and shiny and fun and gold. And as you can see, it is getting on my flooded areas and that is okay. That is an okay to okay thing. And then let's get some more. And we're just gonna dribble in some green and yellow. Blah, 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 blah. Look how technical this is. Look how hard this is. It's wonderful. You can play with it. We're just making a nice fun forest scene for my mushrooms with some gold and some green. We get to mix it around and let it go all the way down and over. And I'm sure you're thinking, but Yzma, we just did those mushrooms. What about the mushrooms? You just covered them. Well, my sweet viewers, my lovely lovelies, you take our wonderful paper towel and we blot. We can uncover them. Or if you don't wanna do that, you can always go back over them again later and color in some more. Uh, where did I put my papers? Blurp. And you can take that red again and go right back over it. And now they're sparkly because of the gold and that just makes it so much cooler. Because who wouldn't want sparkly red mushrooms? You tell me. You can't lie. I know you all do. Me. <clears throat> So this is just a fun technique. I have one to show you guys that I kind of did a little while ago. Let me check out my phone camera again. That it's just a flooding technique of a bunch of colors together. This was for a, uh, a bicycle water bottle kind of grabber. So that's all the pearless stuff that we talked about. And then you just fill it in and create that wonderful, kind of like a watercolor painting instead of a watercolor design, I guess. It's all very random. And I love randomness like that. I love it, love it, love it. Where you can just, if you want different colors, if you want some more greens in there, in those puddles. Oh, let's get some more on the bottom. Let's get some more near our grass. You can see I like to finger paint a lot. We just want to play with all of our pretty colors and then let that fun dye job soak in wherever it may. If you want to be even a more fun, you can just strip straight from the bottle. But I always like having a dish out just in case if I want to mix up some more yellow with it, things like that. And then you see this darker section here, I can just spray it along. Your leather piece will get very wet this way, but that's okay. So I just recommend kind of doing it first, like the, the design itself first, and then going from there. Block my mushrooms. Then you can also see on the other half of it, all that fun drippiness going on. I think it's really cool, in my opinion, because it's all shiny. And then you're saying to yourself, what if I wanna do a completely different design? On the other side, you can absolutely do that. So let's go ahead and wet down this side. Entirely. Um, what's this one? That's persimmon red and some green. Why don't we get some purple in there? Because purple's fun. I'm also running on a purple, so I won't do a lot, but we're gonna do some purple in there because purple sounds like fun. Then you fill in the other side and then same thing. Add in that wonderful purple. You can add in some blue if you wanted to. Bloop, bloop I say. There we go. You can add in some more red. 
And then we will just take that squirt bottle and again, just spread it along. And then you can play with those drippy drops. And get it to just fill in that area and make a really cool pouch or mug or whatever you guys would like to play with. That's what I love about watercolors. It's just playing with hair colors. You're not actually, you know, making anything in particular. Go ahead and add some more gold to that side, along with our purple and red. We'll do the same thing we did on the green side. Make it a clash of colors. Nice spring and autumn meeting together, I guess. And there's gold all over it. It's really awesome. Huh. Here we go, lovely viewers at home. So this is kind of the messier version of it in my mind. This one creates kind of different looks to it. Uh, again, like this one I'm showing you guys, you know, there's different puddles you can make. You can add the pearl to it. You can add the gold to it. You can add all kinds of different colors to get shine or to get dark sections and things like that. Um, and obviously you can see it over my laser design, but that's okay. And then I'll probably go back in later on this and paint in our mushrooms some more so we can have some more dark mushrooms. But this is just a general idea of what that's going to look like. As you can see, the back is uh, obviously very wet, but it's kind of fun. There's a lot of gold in this. I really like how this came out. So well, that one was only 10 minutes. I know it's a very easy one, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to our third fun uh, watercolor technique. I will finish that one again later. So we have our last fun design and I'm getting dye all over it already because it's on my gloves. We're gonna do the same thing that we've always done. We're gonna go ahead and spray it down first. So it absorbs. And creates our puddle. And then this one is kind of like the other one. We're gonna use our dropper tool a lot and we're gonna create what I call paint splatter with our watercolors. Um, so we're going to be dripping from the bottles. We're going to be dripping from our water dropper. We're going to be dripping from our paint brushes to create that paint splatter. It's actually really cool. Now, <clears throat> hopefully you can see it on my phone camera, but I have a kind of design already set up on this piece just to give myself some guidelines for where I want my paint splatter to go. I will go ahead and again rinse out my brush in case I need to use it, which it's always nice to have a cleaned out brush. Anyway, bloop. I generally use brushes for all of my dyeing um, or paper towels. I don't use the little foam thingies. I don't use like the wool dots or anything like that. I will get my hands dirty and make it look exactly how I want it to look. So, we. So, for our paint splatter, let's go ahead and do. I did pink at one time. Let me do something like that. Um, let's go ahead and do blue. So what I like doing is again creating that puddle and then I will directly drip some blue into my paint design. Oh, Part my tiny brush away. And then I will take that blue and my water dropper and push it into that design so it looks like a paint splatter. Bloop, bloop. And if you're wondering if it looks ugly right now, that's okay. Bloop.
paint splatter. There we go. Get some more blue on our brush. And we're just going to follow my kind of design for where that's going to go. This one is a bit more like painting in, but we like that little bit of uh, randomness to it. Randomness is fun. Remember to always add extra water whenever you're doing your watercolor designs. Helps out a lot when you're trying to spread color around. It's not like the antique gels where you kind of have to add more or less or like super sheen to get it to go away. Got to have that water there to really play with it. Here we go. Just creating our paint splatter. And the reason why I'm doing it like this is to create those thin areas and those thick areas. All right, now here's a fun one I love doing with the same technique. So I take my little dropper, put that down, I put a drop of blue there, and then I like to pretty much let it go and let it go wherever it hurts desires. And that is auto also a fun paint splatter technique. It's pretty much what we were doing in the other one, where you want to just push it around and play with it. You can also squirt it out like that. Boop, boop. Get a little help in hand. And this one is fun. I wanted to do this one with my pearl to show you guys how cool it gets when it gets all thick and stuff like that. So you can get that fun shiny stuff in there while you're creating your paint splatter. Like I said, you can always tell I like finger painting a lot. So I did this technique on a couple of mugs that somebody ordered um, a little while ago, and then I brought them to Bifter. It was just a really cool paint splatter thing that you can just drip on there and have some fun with. You can take your other squirt bottle if you like. You can create little areas to plop in that dye. You want smaller paint splatter. If you want to make, you know, some random dots that you made before, you want to darken up the one area that we already did. Bloop, bloop, bloop. 
Ui. The paint flatter is just one of those fun things that I think is a cool technique where you're just playing with it still, but you're creating that shape to it. And I mean, paint splatters are random anyway, so. Wee. And then we got that fun pearl there. So if we wanted, we can also create some pearl drops on here. With our small paintbrush. Like that. I hope you guys can see it on the camera. It's always cool to see the, the pearl stuff when it mixes in with the other colors. Now granted, this is all loose shape things. So loose shape things are really easy to make with watercolors because obviously it'll go everywhere. But that's no reason you can't sit there again with my small paintbrush and add a darker layer to your, your paint splatter, to other objects, just like we did before with our mushrooms. We can create that actual paint splatter before the, uh, the mess, as it were. <laughs> You know. There we go. And it's great because there's still that pearl stuff down there, so it'll really lighten up that paint splatter. Here we go. Again, it probably looks a little bit messy, but honestly, this is the stuff I love because you can create these paint splatters and then if you really wanted to, you can make the background an entirely different color or just let this sun dry and you get that really wonderful tan on there, which really brightens up against the pearl, honestly, because the pearl makes everything so shiny and so wonderful and I love it. Um, let's see, what else can we do this one? We can add we can add some more pearl drops. Why don't we do that? I love that stuff. Let's do something fun. I love the fun stuff. Let's get all random. So we're going to go ahead, add a drop of pearl, and we're going to go, burp, 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 burp. but that pearl is on the regular leather, you say to me, Miss, Miss Yzma, and that's okay. And it will spread out, and it will be this really cool shiny bit when it dries. Wee. So this will be a really fun shiny blue pouch when this is done. Remember what we did last time, we can always add some more blue if you guys wanted to. And today's puddles and guess what? It will be shiny blue. Paint splatters on the back half. Whoop. Almost spilling my own stuff everywhere. And if you're wondering, yes, they will totally dry like these little dots that I'm making. And it's awesome. Here we go. I've got some more pearl in here. Checking my time. Trust me, this is gonna be so cool when it's done. I can't wait to post the photo for you guys. Randomness is just the best. So we are hitting the 45 minute mark, which is kind of where I wanted to hit anyway. And we're going to go ahead and open up. Uh, I, again, would prefer chat versus, uh, not chat, would prefer voice versus uh, chat, in my opinion. 
Um, if you guys would like to ask me any questions, I'll go ahead and open that up for Q&A. Um, it can be about the leather technique. It can be about any other dye techniques that I do. Um, I promise I'm not that crazy. I don't do that weird stuff. But we can go ahead and show off our other two dyes that we did. Where did I put that one? Oh. That one's almost done. It's kind of cool. So I will go ahead and open up the floor to any questions you guys have. And hopefully I will also pay attention to chat if you guys don't really want to um, speak to me. That's okay too. But I'm going to go ahead and kind of fiddle with this while we do that. So go ahead. Ask away. Let me think, can I even open the chat? Eh. Chat. Okay, so no, nothing on chat so far, that's okay. I do have a question for you, Yzma. Go what ahead. Do you, what do you do to seal all this lovely painting that you have been doing? So we use, um, what is the actual name of it? Uh, I actually think it's just called sealant. I get it from Tandy. It is a spray bottle, like you would get a regular clear spray, um, like uh, spray paint kind of stuff. And I usually do about two to three layers and they become waterproof. The inside is still um, able to get wet. And obviously kind of, if you spill something in it, it makes a difference, but uh, it closes it all up perfectly. None of the water ever runs again, even in rain, which I've already done at a couple bifters. <laughs> um, what is the actual name of our spray sealant? Super Sheen. Super Sheen. That's what it's called. Um, what? I don't think it's Super Sheen. Let me double check. Are you sure? sure. Okay. Sure. He's going to get the actual name of me and be my little assistant right now. Um, but it is a spray sealant that we get everything from Tandy. So. It closes up all the water dye really wonderfully. And again, like I said, I've, I've done it at a couple bifters already and pretty much set out my, my stuff in the rain by accident. But um, it makes it really nice and closed and none of that water runs and it's great. He'll, he'll just get the real name. <laughs> what is it? Y'all didn't know I live with Zorak. He's over there. I want this on the Guild Archive. <laughs> Google it. Evening's leather sheen. Okay. So it can be quote, you can show a photo. So hopefully that's on there. It is Phoebings, Phoebings, Febbings, I don't know, leather sheen. And uh, that is what we use to seal it. Uh, we use that on every single piece of leather that we own. Chest piece, pouches, greaves, belts, doesn't matter. It holds all of it up really, really well. Can you see it? That way. Thank you. You're so helpful. Um, so that is the main thing that we use for all of our work. Um, in a pinch, we use uh, the clear spray paint, but that is in a pinch. Like if we are at the very end of our rope, we will use that too. It's it's not the best, but it, it works in a pinch, honestly. Thank you, love. All right. Any other questions, my lovelies? Do you I do any... Uh, mixed media things like acrylics and watercolor, anything on leather? Um, I was going to say if I had any examples. I currently don't have any examples, but I will generally use the, where did I put them? The Kova colors as well. The Kova colors are the acrylic version of leather paint. Uh, give me a second. There we go. This one's just silver, so the acrylic Kova colors I will use with the water stains as well. And again, it just thins up the color because it is a water stain. So if I was to use this particular silver with a blue water stain, then it would be a paint 
that's thinned up with blue and it would turn a silver blue, much like our, our pearlesque stuff that turns that shiny bit. Um, I wish I had an example of that. I wanna say it's, it's probably already sold or in a box somewhere over there, but um, it just generally, it actually really wonderfully mixes together because you can use water with acrylic paint too and thin it. So I'm just adding more layers to those colors essentially. A pouch, just assume I've always used it on a pouch. <sighs> That's all we do. <laughs> I know. Um, so if I was to make like the rupee pouch, I would take a red Kova color and then maybe even mix it with pinks or whites or something to create a lighter rupee color. What do you think? I'm just staring at them. Um, I actually really love the Kova colors. Any, any, Echo Flow, Kova Color, any Echo Flow water stain, they are really wonderful. I will trust Echo Flow forever. Even though I know at Tandy they're getting some new uh, dyes and colors in right now and I don't, I don't wanna mess with them because I love these so much. <laughs> uh, will you hand me the, the skull pouch actually? I was just thinking about that. So like the difference is that this bad boy, like what I posted on the Guild is that this one is all Kova Color with a black antique gel on the back, where I could do the same thing with a um, water stain and get the same kind of browns and everything like that. I mean, I just don't own brown water stain currently, but I can um, and get all the fun colors from that. I just like doing bright stuff more, that's all. What else we got? I'm having fun. Is everyone okay at home? We're all going insane slowly. <laughs> um, the other thing I want to mention too, just everybody, yeah, you know, questions or no questions, you know, I hope this helped everybody out. I know my techniques are probably a little weird compared to normal dye techniques. Um, because I learned everything like on the go and just kind of dealing with it as it came. Everything I do is just the way it is. So um, if you find a better technique, you're welcome to employ it in your own work. Just like as any artist, if you have something better that works for you, do it. You don't have to follow my techniques to the T. Um, and again, these are just what work for me. So um, I've also got the full on flooding versions. like the fairy pouch that we finished earlier. I'll go ahead and put that one there. That the fairy pouch, I just filled in everything with different colors and I mix it all together with my paintbrush and my gloves. Ooh. But if something else works for you guys, that works, you know. Like uh, I filled in her on her wings and the mushroom and her little outfit in different colors, but she still has the purple there because that's what was in the background. That's what we did with our mushrooms. Um, I'm trying to think of any other examples, but I really don't. We All right. Sorry for spewing information. Go ahead if somebody has a question. Do you have links to your shop or Etsy store? Available? Um, I can go ahead and actually post that in chat really quickly if somebody wants to, to share that, but boop. Let's see. Um, yes, my text will be viewed by everyone. And my favorite part about having a shop and doing leather and things like that is just that I can make so many different designs for people and have so much creativity. Oh, there we go. Um, but I, I love being that open book kind of shop. You can get whatever the hell you want from my shop and I will happily do it. Wee. Thanks everybody for hanging out with me though. This was fun. We got about uh, seven minutes more, or sorry, six minutes more now. Um, if anybody has any other questions about the technique, again, about leather, anything at all. I know um, Cien Fuegos did something a little while ago. If I have different versions of what he had, if you guys want to ask any questions about that, that's fine too. If anybody wants to see the gigantic laser etcher that we got, that's fine. I don't mind if it, that's on the archive too. I like that kind of stuff. 
Wee. So since no one's popping in with any more questions, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. Cool by me. Okay. And it looks like we got six minutes into